stuffy old church in. Oh, how could every one of them be booked? Simple. It's the season. I'm telling Dix, I think it's a sign. I think we should aim for something bigger, like a circus tent. I got it. Finish me. How'd you feel about a pagan ceremony at dawn? We'd still need a place. Roof of the chicken shack. No. Before you say no, think about it. You can hang an awful lot of wind chimes on a giant plastic beak. Get some matching togas for Jamie and Junior. Sacrifice a couple chickens, make everybody go barefoot. You don't like the idea? Well, I, I like the outdoor part. Okay, no wind chimes. Oh, how about you something a little more traditional, maybe? Mm. You know, the perfect place, too. It's just impossible. No, no, none of that. Come on, keep your spirits up. Nothing is impossible. I'll tell you what. I love you, I'm mad about you. Anything you want, I'll get it for you. How about the parking lot of the Glamorama? Why don't you just leave the wedding plans up to me, my dear? <laughs> I guess it's a good idea. No, seriously, honey, look, I know, I, I think I know which way you're going, and, and keep the faith, okay? Nothing is out of the question just yet. What the hell is this? What are you guys all dressed up for? She'll blow our cover. You got a minute? Sure, what's up? Well, I got a little problem. Are you okay? Did something happen? No, it's not me. It's Taylor. Hey! What are you doing? Your girlfriend's not here. So you thought you'd break in and wait for Julia to get back? Have you lost it? Come on, let's get out of here. Taylor, forget it. I'm not going to let you do this. Try and stop me. The minor child, Jamal Wilson, must be returned to his natural father, Alec McIntyre, no later than tomorrow. It's a crime. Miss Hoganson, thank you. We did the best we could. Well, maybe we're just going to have to do more than that. children brought to you by kellogg's with good taste nutrition and value the best to you each morning from kellogg's i'm sorry your honor but we're not quite through here you heard my decision this is from yes i did and i'm afraid i just can't accept that and walk out of here your honor all you've done is lighten the foster care caseload by one child where is the justice in that? Ms. Fry, I've heard both sides. Obviously, Ms. Hogerson's uh, point regarding your emotional involvement is a point sadly well taken. Well, Your Honor, emotional involvement goes two ways. Jamal happens to think of my husband and I as his parents, too. In the eyes of the law, Mr. McIntyre is the boy's only legal parent. He has rights. Your Honor, is Alec McIntyre the only person whose rights are protected by the court? What about the boy who you have sentenced to live with a man he hates? Why is Jamal being treated like chattel? Where is the boy whose future is at stake here? Why isn't anybody listening to him? Because if he was here, he would be fighting this harder than I am. May I remind you that this is a courtroom? I know that, Your Honor. And I have explained to Jamal how a courtroom operates. That was very easy. But how do I explain to a young boy that a system designed to dole out justice has made this decision? 
How do I explain to him that something that happened nine months before he was born can rob him of the only stable home he has ever known? That one man whose only gift to his son was the fertilization of an egg can come in and rip his entire life from under him. That is no longer your problem. Well, I'm afraid it is, Your Honor, because Jamal still lives in my house. And I think he's going to have a few questions before he's asked to pack his bag for the umpteenth time to move to another room. Is it too much to ask for a little compassion? Miss Fry, you are a very fine attorney. This case obviously hits close to home. So I'm going to give you a chance to calm yourself before I have to cite you for contempt. Well, Your Honor, I have to say contempt is appropriate because that is exactly how I feel about what you have done to my son. Olivia, this is not going to do you. You listen, Judge Jamal. McGrath needs to hear this. Judge McGrath, the second night that Jamal was in our house, we found him putting on white socks before he went to bed. And when we asked him why, he said it was because one of the many foster parents he had had told him that those sheets were not his and that they had to be recycled for the next child so he'd better make sure he didn't mess them up. And now you're asking to rip him from home in one night. This is a boy who had to write his name on his soda so that he'd have something to drink. This is a boy who took his toothbrush to school just in case a new family picked him up after school. And he's now comfortable enough to call my husband dad. Livia, Livia. Can I tell you about the Christmas album? I was going through our Christmas album and I noticed that a bunch of the group pictures were gone. And then I found them in Jamal's room on his dresser and I asked him why he'd taken those pictures and he said, because I want to remember this Christmas in case I'm not here next year. Well, you've just made damn sure that he won't be here next year. And you've sentenced him to live with a man that he hates, a man that he can't even look in the eye, much less call dad. I should have told him to hold on to those pictures for dear life because there is nothing in this world that counts. There is nothing that lasts forever, and that is a really fine lesson to teach a child. I warned you, Miss Fry. Now I'm going to have to cite you for contempt. Your Honor, please don't do that. I think I understand why Miss Fry feels the way she does, and I think that I can help. <clears throat> so, what's with the cloak and dagger? Afraid somebody will catch you dining with the competition? Would you be quiet? Don't give us away. Give you away to whom? Which reminds me, I have to make a phone call. Palmer, can I possibly borrow your shoe? Your son's unique sense of humor is going to blow this whole operation. Let's get another table. No, no, Come no. On. Stay oh. here. They're the perfect chills. Can you believe what I she just called us? I think we never. should leave. Excuse me. Oh, no, no. Don't move. Don't move. Honestly, Palmer and me, we need a little break from the one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. We've been having some personnel problems back at the ranch. Don't and... involve them. Oh, skip it now. We're, we're on a mission here. Don't call us by our real names. Call us Felix and Sheba. No problem. Who's who? I'm leaving. Oh, no. Stay here. Stay here. You know, Mama, this is ridiculous. Seriously, you could pile a bushel of bananas on your head and call yourself Carmen Miranda. It's not going to fool anybody. Why the disguises? Well, evidently, you haven't heard. It's all over town. <clears throat> Rumors of batter theft. Recipe thievery. Someone done purloined the purty fire? Like Grant took Richmond. Yes, and if you're going to make a joke of this, you might as well leave right now, because we can't Excuse use you. Excuse me? And leave the family recipe in unscrupulous hands? You're out of your mind. Really? Can we help? Well, yeah. No, no. Why not? Come on, Felix. Be a sport. After all, who at this table's got more experience in undercover work as a private investigator? Watch and learn. Hi. You ready to order? Oh. Uh, yeah. I, I think so. I've just got one question. Um, this item on the menu, the, the hot and spicy chicken, is, is mm. that new? Yes. We just put it on the menu this week. Ah, well, uh, that sounds great. Um, four? Mm. Mm. Four? Okay. That mm -hmm. means yes. We can't wait. We just love new things. <laughs> Great. Better be for a good cause. If I need another piece of chicken without it, I'm going to vomit. Oh, it. take a chill pill. What are you two doing playing hooky today anyway? Yeah, I can see Cortland Electronics crumbling away while you spend your time on a dive like this. Au contraire, 007. Dixie and I have been on a little mission of our own. We're in search of a church. And stuck in a lurch. <laughs> Actually, we uh, haven't been able to find an altar available before the 4th of July. The 4th of July? Oh, that's the perfect time. You could have, a, you know, an Uncle Sam theme, red, white, and blue, bombs going up in the background while you sink your vows. Well, we can't wait till July. Can't 
wait till July. Well, there's got to be some place. Well, we were about to start calling bowling alleys when Tad came up with the idea of an outdoor wedding. Oh, birds chirping, flowers blooming, that kind of thing. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Only we're not going to do it in somebody's backyard or in a parking lot somewhere. We thought maybe, you know, well, uh, there's only one perfect place, but it's just not available. Uh, 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 a Cortland Manor right. gazebo. Right. Not available. Oh. So what do you think, Connor? Any chance of making a reality? I've done everything in my power to get the family home back for Peter and for Opal, but unfortunately, no avail. No, the house belongs to Mrs. Livingston until this time next year, and it's an ironclad lease. Well, it seems to me that I've heard before that leases were made to be broken. All you need is somebody with the creativity and imagination for the job. Michael. Like Yeah, but this is breaking the law. Don't pretend you care. You're just here to play security guard for Missy Julia. Look, I'm worried about you. I mean, honestly, do you think that this is going to help anything breaking and entering? This is only going to make your case look worse. Don't recite legalities to me. If you're really on my side, go away and pretend you never saw me. Give it back. Nice. At least it's not a bomb. Give it to me. Did you steal it from the police station? No, it's mine. I bought it. To bug Julia's apartment with? No. It's a belated present from the Easter Bunny. Come on, Taylor. We can come up with a better plan than that. Something legal. Let's do this together. Together? Well, don't you win Fickle Guy of the Month. Oh, come on. I'm on your side. Yeah, today. Where was all your faith and teamwork back when Julia told her first lie? didn't even think. He just automatically sided with that airhead. I know, and I hate what she did. But she makes such great fajitas, you gave her the benefit of the doubt and called me the liar? I made a mistake, and I'm sorry. Not as sorry as I am. I don't need fair-weathered friends. I can clear my name without your help. Now just leave me alone. <laughs> Where'd you get the phone? A suspension gift from Mummy. Hello? Yeah, Taylor, uh, this is Derek. Could you come down to the station? Can't we meet somewhere else, Derek? Well, Julia's here, and... Oh, perfect. Just what I need. I'll be right there. All the... What's the matter? You know why your blubber-brain girlfriend is in the air? She's down at the station trying to stir up more trouble. Well, what else could she do? Wow, let's see. Accuse me of arson, grand theft auto, cold-blooded murder, maybe. You know, given the chance, I just might kill her. What the heck? She's already brain dead. Your Honor, I'm not in any rush, okay? Jamal comes first here. Actually, I would love to sit down and talk to you and Tom about everything before we make the big move. You know, at this point, you know my son better than I do, and I would love to hear whatever you have to offer. A very good idea. Miss Fry, despite what you may think, the state is looking out for the best interest of the child. Good luck, Mr. McIntyre. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> if you need any help, you know where to reach me. Okay, great. Miss I can't thank you enough for everything. 